In this chapter, we will see how the OS 400 manages the various jobs that run on the system. The OS 400 function that handles the jobs is referred to as work management. Any work that enters the system is processed in one of two ways, interactive and batch. Interactive processing is one that requires continuous interaction between the user and the system. For example, from the moment a user signs on, he is continuously entering commands or menu options and the system in turn responds to each user action until he signs off. Batch processing on the other hand does not require continuous communication between the user and the system. For example, a program that prints orders from an order file does not require any interaction with the user. The user has to only start the processing by calling the program and then the system can run the program without requiring any input from the user. The user can, in the meanwhile, continue with other work on the system and does not have to wait for the batch processing to complete. The system performs both interactive and batch processing simultaneously. A job is defined as an environment that allows work to be done. Once a job has been started, you can ask the system to process work by entering a command, selecting a menu option or calling a program. All jobs on the AS400 can be broadly classified as system jobs and user jobs. An example of a system job is the spooling job. Spooling jobs are created by the system and are print programs that are used to print spooled output. User jobs can be classified as interactive jobs, batch jobs, auto start jobs, communication jobs. An interactive job includes all the work done at a workstation from where a user signs on until he signs off. A batch job is run by submitting a request for running programs that do not require user interaction. A communication job is one that is started as a result of a request from another AS400 system. An auto start job is one that is started automatically when a subsystem is started. We will see subsystems in a little while. Let us take a closer look at jobs. Every job is identified by a qualified job name that consists of three parts. A job name, which is the name of the workstation that the user signs onto. The username, which is the same as the user profile name under which the job was started and a job number which is a unique number that is assigned by the system. When accessing a job we can specify an entire job name as shown here or we can specify only the job name and the username or only the job name would also do. Every job is associated with a job description. The job description is used to specify various attributes of the job that determine how the job will be run. In the job description, we can specify the job date, job queue, the job priority on the job queue, output queue, output priority on the output queue, printer device that will be used to print the output, etc. Every job is also associated with a user profile. The user profile contains information about the user. In the user profile, we can specify the highest scheduling priority, job description, 
output queue, printed device, etc. As we mentioned earlier, an interactive job starts when the user signs on and continues until he signs off. If the job generates any printed output, it will be put into the spooled file and placed on the output queue. Output queues in turn are associated with one or more printers. A job waits on the output queue until the spool file is printed. When the user signs off, the job ends. Let us look at batch job. It is usually started by the submit job command which causes the job to be placed on the job queue. All jobs that are waiting to run are placed on a particular job queue associated with one of the subsystems. The job waits on the job queue until other jobs ahead of it have been processed. If the job produces any printed output, it is put on the output queue until it is printed. The batch job ends once when the spooled file is printed. A subsystem is a single predefined operating environment that controls certain resources and manages the jobs that enter the system. The AS400 system can contain one or more subsystems. Each subsystem is designed to handle certain types of job. For example, you can set up one subsystem to handle only interactive jobs, while another subsystem handles only batch jobs, and a third handles only printing jobs. A certain amount of resources are allocated for each subsystem. Whenever a job is started, it is assigned to a particular subsystem. Every subsystem has a subsystem description. The subsystem description defines how many jobs can be run on that subsystem, where and how the jobs are to be run, what resources are to be used to run the job. The subsystem description also identifies the amount of main storage that will be available for jobs running in this subsystem. It also defines various sources of the work for the subsystem such as auto start jobs, workstations, job queues and communications. Two predefined subsystem configurations are shift with the AS400. The default subsystem configuration consists of three subsystems. The controlling subsystem is called QBase. You also have QSys work where system jobs are run and a spooling subsystem QSPL. All jobs except the system jobs and spooling jobs run under the QBase subsystem. Another configuration consists of QCTL as the controlling subsystem which only runs console job. You also have the QSys work subsystem which runs certain system functions. QInter for interactive job, QBatch for batch jobs and QSPL for spooling jobs. You can also have QCML if you are using communication support and QServer if you are using file serving functions. The system value QCTL SPSD determines which subsystem configuration is to be used. With this we come to the end of this chapter. In this chapter we studied work management we saw both interactive and batch processing. We studied about jobs and saw the different types of jobs. We also looked at subsystems and subsystem descriptions.